Good morning. Today is Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023. The mark of a great person is that we learn momentous lessons even, or I would say especially, from their mistakes. Last week, Sivan Rahav Meir wrote about a correction that she received about an earlier essay that she wrote. Erez Tamir, who is a bus driver in northern Israel, sent a message to Sivan Rahav Meir, Shalom to you, Sivan. I'm here to register a complaint regarding a sentence that you wrote last Friday as follows. In the Friday before, Sivan had written, in this week's Torah portion, this is a couple weeks ago, this was the Parsha of Re'eh, in this week's Torah portion, dozens of mitzvos are given to the children of Israel. So, dozens of mitzvos are given to the children of Israel listed in that week's Torah portion of Parsha Re'eh. So, Erez Tamir complained, and he said, Dozens of mitzvos is an expression that bothers me. What is the first thing you would say if you found a sack of diamonds? Would you say, I found dozens of diamonds and be content with that? Really? These are diamonds. I found, and you would give the exact number. They would be counted with precision. Please relate to mitzvos with the same exactitude you would employ when relating to money, to diamonds, to children. Not dozens, but count them exactly. They're so precious. And Sivan writes, and so, in the Torah portion of Re'eh, there were 55 mitzvos. In last week's Torah portion of Shoftim, there were 41 mitzvos. And this week, the parsha of Kiseitze, there are 74 of the 613 mitzvos. This week's parsha, Kiseitze, is the, num- is the portion that has the largest number of the 613 commandments in one Torah parsha. Parsha That's this week, Kiseitze. Now, what's fascinating is not just the number of mitzvos in our parsha, but how disparate so many of these mitzvos are. Just to give a few examples. There's a mitzvah of Khan Sipur. If you come across a bird's nest, that before you take the eggs or the chicks, you have to uh, move away the mother bird. If you build a house, you have to make a, uh, a guardrail around the roof so nobody falls off or hurts themselves. You're not allowed to plant different kinds of species together. You're not allowed to plow using two different animals like an ox and a donkey uh, 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 pulling a plow together. We're not allowed to wear garments that are made with both wool and linen. On the corners of our garments, if we're wearing a garment that has four corners, we have to put tzitzis. We have to put the strings at the end of the, in the four corners of the garment. It is, this week's Torah portion is a cornucopia of mitzvos. But what connects them? What is the theme of these apparently disparate mitzvahs? So the Midrash says as follows. Rabbi Pinchas ben Chama said, Wherever you go, mitzvahs accompany you. When you build a new house, there is a mitzvah to make sure that there's a guardrail. When you ha- open the door, when you build the door, you have to put a mezuzah. If you wear new clothes, there's a mitzvah about what kind of materials can and cannot be mixed. If you go to get your hair cut, you have to be careful not to cut the corners of your head with a razor or even to cut them completely off. If you go to a field and you're about to plow the field, well, there are mitzvahs. Which seeds can be planted together and not be planted together? Which animals can be worked together and not worked together? And even if you are not busy doing anything at all, but merely walking on the way, 
there are mitzvos that accompany you. If you see a bird's nest while you're walking along the way and you want to take the eggs, that's the mitzvah shuluach hakan. Rav Aaron Lichtenstein sees this as a fundamental aspect of Jewish life. He writes that some people divide human experience into two realms, the religious realm of divine service, like sacrifices and prayer and repentance, and the neutral realm of human initiative and activity, like commerce and agriculture. And according to this approach, those two realms are mutually exclusive. A person's divine service has nothing to do with their everyday pursuits. And this view could be taken a step further, which is to say that since divine service is only possible, according to this view, in the first realm of prayer and study and ritual, maybe the importance of the stuff in the second realm, the neutral realm, is less important. So what does it matter? Going to work, plowing a field, Those things are secondary to life. But the Midrash, Ravarn Lichtenstein says, the Midrash is teaching us just the opposite. Wherever you go, the mitzvot are with you. There is no distinction between a religious realm and a neutral realm. Every realm, every place, and every moment of life has the opportunity to elevate that action, that moment, through mitzvahs that God has given us. In every area of life, there is a mitzvah. In all areas of human existence and in all human pursuits, they are governed and guided by Torah. As the Medra says, there is no place devoid of God's presence. And there is no time that is devoid of God's presence. And that means that those so-called neutral areas, our business life, our family life, our leisurely life, those are as much a part of divine service as prayer and study and sacrifice. Everything has to be utilized to serve God. So, Let's look this morning a little bit more deeply at just one of these mitzvos in this week's Torah portion. If you happen to be walking along the road and you see that there is a bird's nest, it's a kosher bird, and there is a mother bird that is sitting on either the eggs or the chicks. And the mother is sitting or hovering over the eggs or the chicks. Don't take the mother together with the chicks or the eggs. Rather, send away the mother bird first. And then you can take the chicks or the eggs in order for it to be good for you, yomim, and to lengthen your days. Now, there are many interesting and curious features of this mitzvah, which I hope to discuss with you both today and tomorrow with God's help. But just to focus on that last phrase, it is rare for the Torah to give a specific promise of a reward for a specific mitzvah. The Torah tells us, if you fulfill this mitzvah of Kan Sipur, of sending away the mother bird, it will be good for you, and it will lengthen your life. There is a dispute in the Talmud about whether the Torah's promise is about life in this world or life in Olam Haba, in the world to come, in the spiritual realm. Okay, that's a dispute, but there is a reward that is promised. There's only one other mitzvah in the Torah that explicitly lists a reward, and it's the exact same reward. We learned it a few weeks ago in the Parsha Veschanan. Kabeda Savicha Vesimecha. Honor your father and your mother. Kasher Tzivcha Shemelokecha. As God has commanded you, 
Laman Yarichu in Yomecha, in order for your days to be lengthened, in order for your life to be lengthened, Ulaman Yitablach, in order for it to be good for you. Here, too, the same dispute in the Talmud exists, whether the long life and the good life being referred to is life in this physical world, or it's talking about the spiritual world of Olam Haba, the world to come. But how, how is it that of all the mitzvahs in the Torah, these two mitzvahs explicitly offer the same reward, and these two mitzvahs don't appear to have any connection to each other, one has to do with sending away a bird. Another has to do with how we honor our parents. doesn't seem to have any connection. Why should there be a reward listed? And why should it be the same reward for these two things? So there's one answer. And that is because the mitzvah of Kibbut Ava Aim is so difficult to properly fulfill to show honor to our parents at every single moment, never to allow an unpleasant word to pass our lips, never to show any disrespect, any belittling in any way. It's so, so difficult. Especially, well, both ways. If we have the privilege to live near our parents, what an amazing blessing. We have so many opportunities to serve, to help, to honor, but of course, so many opportunities, never, God forbid, to do the opposite, especially if it becomes very difficult and there are medical situations or, or mental situations that could make it very, very difficult to be able to honor at every single moment. And if we live far away from our parent, then our opportunities are so limited and we have to rush to try to push in every moment that we possibly can to show honor when it is possible for us. It's such a difficult mitzvah. The mitzvah Shiloh HaKan, sending away the mother bird, it's easy. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't take any time. All you have to do is this. That's all you have to do. You see the nest, the mother's there. Just shoo away the mother bird and you fulfill the mitzvah. Maybe the Torah wants to teach us. Don't try to think about what the most important mitzvah is and where there is the greatest reward because we do not know. God commands us mitzvahs. We have to observe all of them. We don't know which are more important in God's eyes and which are less important in God's eyes. For a mitzvah that we see is so difficult to fulfill compared to a mitzvah that is so easy for us to do, the Torah is showing us there's exactly the same reward. You're not going to be able to figure out which is more important, which is less important. And therefore, the Torah is teaching us, pay equal attention to every single mitzvah. Okay, that's one way to look at it. But I want to share with you Another answer given by Rabbi Zalman Saratskin in his work, Aznayim the Torah. It's a very important and helpful commentary to the Torah. He says that these two mitzvos, sending away the mother bird and honoring parents, is actually the same mitzvah. Let me try to explain it to you in my words first. I remember holding our children as newborn babies. They will never know what I did for them. They will never know the sleepless nights, the sacrifices, the worry, the effort that that child never saw. They'll never know everything that I, as a father, did for my children. And this is true for all of us. Children never know the extent of what their mother did and does for them, what their father did and does for them. 
Only when a child grows up and has a child of their own, maybe they begin to think about what their parents did for them, but even then, maybe not completely. But there's another way to see what your parents did for you, and that is to fulfill the mitzvah of Shiluah HaKan, of sending away the mother bird. Listen carefully to Rabbi Saratskin's words. Shaharei ha'em nishlachas mibnei shelo baracha. Why does the mother bird have to be sent away? Because the mother bird is sitting on her babies, protecting her babies. Kasher karav adam, when a person who for a bird, a kosher bird, a person, a human being, is a predator from whom a bird should be frightened. And if a bird was acting with its own self-interest, the bird would have flown away to escape being caught by the human being. When a person comes near, but she does not run away. She does not fly away. She remains where she is. She remains in a place of danger. She places herself. She remains herself in this place of danger in order to protect her children. She's willing to sacrifice her life in order to protect her children. And even then, she may not be successful. So therefore, the Torah says that a bird that will stay and not follow its instinct of self-preservation, but will stay in order to risk, to sacrifice its life, to save its children, its young, the Torah does not allow a person to exploit that valiant act of the mother bird and you can catch the mother bird. You have to move away the mother bird because we don't want to exploit the fact that this mother is willing to sacrifice herself to protect her children. When you fulfill this mitzvah of Shiluah HaKan and you understand the significance of this as Rav Saretzkin is explaining, you will understand exactly what your parents did for you. They risked themselves to defend you, to protect you, to nourish you, the Torah gives the same reward to these two mitzvos in order to teach us that one of them is an insight into the other. This is important to think about all the time and especially before Rosh Hashanah, which is when we always read this week's Torah portion, three weeks before Rosh Hashanah. Because if we think about the mother bird and what she's willing to do for her young, and we think about what our parents do for us and what we do for our children, that should also cause us to think about what God does for us. And what God does for us is more than we will ever know. My friends, I wish you a great day. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.